26 is 13. So this is part three of the mini crotch rocket build. I actually just uploaded part two like an hour and a half ago. Now, I noticed something. when do I, I was doing a little bit of research trying to figure out what rake angle do we want these front forks to be? What's like an average rake angle on a crotch rocket? And I noticed something in my research, something that I completely failed to think of when building this triple tree and the front fork setup, trailing angle. I completely forgot about that, and the trailing angle on this is completely wrong, and we gotta fix it. Basically, what trailing angle is, you wanna draw an imaginary line down the pivot point of the front forks, and you gotta find the contact patch where the tire meets the ground. You want that imaginary line to be in front of the contact patch. It's somewhere uh, on Harleys, it's way forward. On uh, crotch rockets, it's like somewhere between two to four inches in front of the contact patch of the tire. And with this setup, it is dead nuts in the middle of it, which is not how you want it. If we left it like this, this thing would be even more of a death trap than it already is. So we have to fix it. Luckily, I kind of noticed this before building the whole frame and everything, so we don't have to modify too much to fix the problem. So basically, what we need to do is we need to just kind of remake the triple tree a little bit. Uh, we need to move this pivot point right here. We need to either we can either move it forward or tilt it forward. We're probably going to do a little bit of both. Probably gonna move it forward like an inch and then tilt it forward like five or ten degrees, so therefore that imaginary line is either two or two and a half inches in front of the contact patch to fix the steering issue. And that means we need to modify the triple trees yet again.
Alright, this thing's starting to take shape. It's definitely looking really awesome. Uh, now, this was the only way that I could figure out how to build a frame like this around such a giant engine and still be able to get the engine out of the frame. Now, I kind of used the look of a Ducati Monster 797 to kind of replicate engine mounts. Now, on a Ducati Monster 797, the top portion goes to engine mount in the rear, and then the, this piece of tubing goes to an engine mount in the front. And I kind of use that to have, to continue the look of that and to kind of have the, this one's fake of the fake, and then these two are fake engine mounts, but I use them to have threaded rod running through them. Once you take the threaded rod out, this bottom portion right here can be removed. And then in theory, if it's if my theory is correct, then we can simply just lift the lift the frame off the engine. And that was pretty much the only way that I could figure out how to do this and still get the engine off the frame and have, you know, to basically just have this bottom portion right here be removable and using the engine, the engine mounts of a real Ducati monster to be kind of fake engine mounts and have more frame mounts or whatever, whatever you want to call it. So that's how I figured out how to do that. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to work on the tail section. We need to figure out how long we want it, what angle and how wide and the shape of it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, because we're not really doing plastics, it's kind of really, it's really important to have the frame kind of, you know, because you can look, because on a real motorcycle, the look of it, the, the unique look, what makes a motorcycle look cool is the plastics, how the plastics are shaped, and because I can't make plastics, uh, I have to be able to use the frame to have this thing look cool. That's kind of why I chose the Ducati Monster 797, because they have more of the frame exposed, and they kind of use that to make it look really cool and look, look unique. And we have to continue that with the tail section, make it look cool and have it shaped really cool while still being functional. And uh, so let's work on the tail section and then we can possibly start, if we have time, start working on getting the rear shock installed and getting the rear suspension finalized. This thing is so cool. You gotta admit, this thing is just, it's looking awesome. It looks fast. <laughs> oh man. I am really liking how this frame is turning out. I think it looks uh, super awesome. Now, the next thing we should work on is let's let's work on the rear suspension and get the rear shock installed on this thing. Now, I bought three different shocks uh, from Amazon. The first one I bought is this. I bought this because it looks cool and uh, it has a lot of adjustability, but the I didn't really look at the listing and the, the thickness of the spring on this is ridiculous. Look at the size difference of the spring. So this is definitely not going to work. This is like for a real motorcycle. 
So, can't use that. And then I bought these two. These were kind of cheap. I couldn't find a decent one that were that was of this size. You know, if you look at shocks that are tiny like this, they're just cheap Chinese kind of garbage. So that's pretty much all I could find. So, I bought two of them. Uh, this one's a little bit shorter and has a little bit less travel. So I think let's just use this one because we don't want that much suspension not travel on this thing. Because let's be honest, we don't really have that much ground clearance and we don't want the, the frame to bottom out before the suspension bottoms out. So let's just use the smaller one with less suspension travel. Now, I want to make this thing be highly adjustable I, because, you know, this does have a little bit of adjustability on the shock, you know, just like a normal go-kart suspension sh chain, uh, adjustability. But I want a little bit more than that because I want to be able to kind of fine tune this thing. Uh, with the rear suspension because let's be honest this engine's a little heavy and I'm not really sure if this little shock the, the swing arm's not that long which is good but uh, I want to make sure this thing can hold up the weight of the engine on this thing so I think the best way to have it adjustable is to just have one mount on the swing arm and then on the main chassis right here have like four or five uh, mounts so you can mount it straight up and down or like this and somewhere in the middle and all that kind of stuff So I think that's gonna be the best way to do this. So we need to take the swing arm off uh, We need to weld a mount onto onto here and then uh, we need to weld multiple mounts onto the main chassis So in the last video of this project, I said that I was having a really hard time welding this very last bit and I just couldn't get it to work. Every time I tried to weld this, it would start bubbling out, start getting a bunch of porosity or corrosion, whatever you, whatever it is with aluminum. And a lot of you guys mentioned or you know said that what could be the issue, and I didn't even think of this in the, in the moment, but what could be the issue is because I'm trying to weld something that's now enclosed, there's a bunch of hot gases in here trying to escape out the very hole that I'm trying to weld closed. Now that makes a lot of sense now that you guys said that, and I didn't even think of that in the moment. So uh, what you guys were saying was go to the bottom, drill some tiny, tiny little hole in the bottom, and then see if, we, if I can uh, finish welding this and see if that'll work. So let's do that. Let me... Let's drill a tiny little hole in this, uh, in the bottom and see if we can, uh, finish welding that up. <laughs> Check that out. That actually worked. It's definitely not the prettiest weld ever but I was able to close it up and finally get it to work. That drove me nuts in the last video that I couldn't close it up and it finally worked.
right, now the reason I made five different mounting locations for the top of the rear shock is because I wanted to use a little shock like this, something that's small that works with the scale of this vehicle, but I couldn't find on Amazon a little shock like this that had a little bit thicker spring than this, and I wanted to make sure that we can build the rear suspension to where it doesn't collapse when we put the weight of the engine on it, plus myself. Because let's be honest, the engine does kind of weigh a lot, it's pretty heavy for how tiny this thing is, and I couldn't find a bigger a, a shock with a little bit bigger spring. So this gives us a lot of adjustability with uh, fine-tuning the rear suspension as well as we have a little bit more adjustability with this spring rate adjuster and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully, hopefully we can get the rear suspension to work and it doesn't collapse as soon as I sit on this thing. So now I gotta say, I am loving this little vehicle. I'm, I think it's turning out kind of amazing. It looks super awesome the engine and the tires, that it really works well together. The next video of this project, we gotta build a custom gas tank and a custom seat for this thing, as well as handlebars and controls and all that kind of stuff, and we gotta continue the look of the mini crotch rocket look with this thing. Now, as you guys can tell, I've been painting the CPR 1000 project while I've been, while I've been working on this. Basically, I've been working on this while I've been waiting for the paint to dry. Uh, that stuff and right now uh, yesterday I finally put the last coat of paint on uh, on all that stuff and it is now finally time to reassemble that project which means I gotta put this thing away to continue with that project now let's actually let's end this video by getting this thing off the table and testing the suspension I am super curious if the suspension actually works and hopefully it just doesn't collapse when, when I sit on this thing. Sixty view. Tiny. <laughs> it, it's always hard to like see the size of something when it's on a table. Once you get it on the floor, look at it. Look at this thing. It's just it's absolutely tiny. This thing's gonna be a wild ride. So right now the rear shock it's at its stiffest point right now. The spring rate it's at its stiffest and it's almost straight up and down. And right now it's a little, it, it, it's a little on the soft side. I'm not really pushing down very hard on this. Let me, let me sit on this. Ah. You can see, yeah. Yeah, the, the suspension bottoms out when I sit on it. Oh man, this thing is uh this thing is gonna be wild to ride. As far as the front suspension, that seems fine. Definitely making a weird noise. But the rear suspension, yeah, that's uh that's unfortunately not gonna work. So I'm gonna go on Amazon and see if I can find a, a similar size uh, shock with a little bit thicker spring. So I was curious about the other shock that I have. I know this one uh, has a lot thicker spring. It says 980 pounds. I was just curious about it and... Nah, this one is way, way too strong. Way too stiff.
I want the suspension to be a little bit soft and to, you know, compress when I sit on it, not be, not be riding like this, you know. <sighs> well, this kind of sucks. I'm just going to have to uh, either, I'm just going to get another one of these shocks and double them up, or I'm going to try to find uh, a different shock of the exact same size with a thicker spring. And I guess we'll just we'll just deal with that in the next video of this project.